Welcome to Onivia, League of Legends Highlights. These are the best highlights from today's LCK matchup. This is a button, and Ona is going to ignore it. He made his feet Don't cold, <laughs> and, then he, and then he kept killing the, the yeah. dogs. Well, Ona is going to look for him. Rootcaller does come down, and there is the Weaver's Wall. Flash out from Kyoshik, but Faker follows him immediately. Now PDD is going to turn up, and there's the culling. Ona, still level 5, so doesn't have the kick. And meanwhile, Zayas and Perfect are fighting. The flash out, but the flash in. First blood for BDD, and Perfect follows up immediately. That's three kills. And is it going to be three games? I mean, it's looking more likely after this moment. Don't count T1. Getting that shove through, Zayas is still wandering towards the lane. Meanwhile, in the bottom lane, Carrier is just doing his very best, but there is a demolish proc. And. So Man, these high notes are really hurting. Yeah, KT is is really winning everywhere. I mean, getting the advantage here, bottom side, as well as some extra plate gold for the Seraphine. And you can see the gold graph showing. Yeah, Encore is going to come on through here as Ona turns up. Carrier almost dies actually before it even happens. His barrel, he's under the turret. And uh, he's, he's going to die. That means the death is also really dead, but at least they get one. Uh, well, there's that. Shenanigans. You know, it went over to the Leona, though. They lose a plate Double top. stats, like times and is bladed into a turret range. <laughs> it's like 17. <laughs> yeah, and, it, and we need the percentage Faker. as well. Oh, as Faker is just dead. Yeah, there's the flash forward. Gets the double tap. And PDD, he's on a killing spree. He is too big right now. Uh, Believe and, that I have. Yeah. <laughs> as. They were the girls from our picture in picture before. Is another encore going to come in as Carrier is going to get solar flared as well? There's a Zenith blade from Carrier one more time. Sorry, from Beryl one more time. As Faker is once again fighting BDD. This time the shove into the rocks is going to come on through. He's playing with fire here as Ona comes on over, but Pyoshik in perfect position. Sonic Wave not going to find the mark. And now T1 Zane. trying to rotate more friends over here to try and help out the mid lane. There's the Weaver's Wall as BDD. He's got the Trigger Seed Shield. He just turns around and kills Faker. There's the kick flash as Pyoshik is going to flash to get back out once again as Ona. One more turret shot and he's going to die, but that's not going to come on through. And now Death is going to need to turn up. There is going to be the kill on to Zayas. And now Perfect comes in at the same time. Gumiyushi. Oh, dear. Let's see whether he can get himself out of this one. Perfect is going to have a slice and or dice coming up relatively soon. His flash is also only a couple of seconds away. The flash comes through from Gumiyushi, though. That is going to send them out of there. Into the Seraphine is not very fun, especially when there's a Leona to just kind of bully the cow, or, or pig, ready, rather. Um, or, Poor. Yeah. yeah. He got there in the end, but... Poor Bristle. Uh, Owner is in trouble. Oh, this is live. Okay, yeah, Daisy's going to get another knock-up as Perfect comes on in. That is going to be the kickback, and that should be enough to disengage. But he has to get the heck out of here. That is going to be a Hextech Drake Don't to be taken. Yeah. BDD does have Teleport. See if he wants to commit to trying to defend some plates here. Topside is taking the grubs here also by T1. Very greedy. It's yeah. going to take Ivern a million years to get that dragon, but... <laughs> yeah, very true. It's all right. Perfect is just flashing forward. This guy is angry. And now Gumiyushi completely out of mana, but did manage to throw down the Dawning Shadow at least. Should be able to walk this one off. So it's so greedy what T1 did there, and they get punished again. I feel like it's we've had two games in a row where it's one team just trying to do too much when they're not allowed to, and it's happened now on both sides. Yeah. Minion wave is coming to him now, so there's no real reason for him to step too far. Not going to head towards the brush now, and he's just going to look for a back angle. Ona, biding his time, but for what is the question? As T1. They are going to be able to take this turret on the bottom side of the map. And well, that is Considering the lead KT had earlier, T1 have really shored that up. I mean, yeah, this is with a fasting Senna, uh, as Guma, speaking of. Yeah, speaking of fasting Senna, he's going to take a lot of damage here. As once again, I mean, the passive from Seraphine actually just BDD really doing just a whole bunch of work. It's okay, yeah. <laughs> In a dash away, there's the flash forward from Ona. He just had a feeling that that one was going to be waiting for him and good patience. BDD not going to be biting off more than he can chew. That was a cannon that he gave up. They so had, that he didn't die there. They had KT have a herald they can drop. They've got full prio on this dragon. They're even going to push down this turret now. Yeah, and I think actually because they managed to stave off that gank, they're able to get this turret. Or at yeah. least most of the turret, most right? Of it. Um, <laughs> immediately uh, rewarded for, for BDD's defensive play. This now maybe immediately play. punished. Let's just see how this one's going to go as the teleport in. BDD looking for Gumiushi, has to flash double TPs. Means that now T1 find themselves a little bit late to their own party. 
And it's going to be the out of turret taken. KT now grouped up, ready to go for this dragon as well. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if I'll be starting that dragon if I were you, Kuma. KT here taking control. Oh, perfect. He wants more. Stride Breaker going to come on through there as he's doing a lot of damage. And this Renekton, way less anemic than the other one. Yeah, he's been fed. Um, this is going to be a TP top for Zayas. So they're going to try to push mid at the same time. There's the flash forward as Faker's going to get interrupted. No riding on the wall for you, sir. And the Solar Flare is going to find the sweet spot. That is an interruption, but PDD is just going to zap him down. And Faker finds himself 0 and 4, unfortunately. And KT, they're going to put P uh, Perfect in the bottom lane. He's going to take down that in a turret. And it's just like they, they, they just mean, took off the clothes from the last game yeah. and replaced them. T1 is basically trying to do so much here. They're not. Will okay. It should still be the turret. Yeah, you can keep talking so about anyway, the other thing. So um, anyway, <laughs> I, feel, I feel like the KT are just not going to fall prey to, to T1 being like, ah, I get something cross map. They're just not going to let them have anything. BDD? Yeah. Uh, he's going to be in a whole host of trouble. The Dawning Shadow is even going to help out. And uh, the turret loses interest in stopping T1 here. So KT will be able to answer with a dragon. They finally got him. Yeah. Uh, Infernal Soul as well this game. That's an exciting they take one. down. <laughs> Objective after objective, find these opportunities. The more they can group up and utilize the Ivern and the shields, the more value they're going to get. As Okay, Beryl could find himself in a rough spot, but he's going in! There's a turret! He has a Zenith Blade, and he's getting under there, and he's surviving, for goodness sake! That was way too long to be alive, as now Death will finally turn up. Speeds himself through here, Perfect is now going to find his entrance way, but... KT have already lost one. Seismic Shove is going to knock back the Renekton, and he could be the next little pickup here as they take down the turret. Perfect is going to be alive. He's much less squishy than he was in game number one. Has another Seismic Shove. This time, he is definitely dead. The Encore! And Death is able to help take down Onagumi. Yushi follows immediately as Death... I mean, the Seraphine is doing ridiculous work. He does die. T1 win the fight. But I'm still very impressed with this so far. Yeah. And has been very involved in Dark. this one. In this jungle that supposedly belongs to KT, but the, the toggle here is showing a different story. Yeah. Tribrush Ward is going to be important. But you can see Ono looking for an opportunity. I don't think he's going to be able to steal away this Drake. That is going to be the sole point picked up by KT. Now, the Weaver's Wall comes in. Glacial, Glacial Prison is used. And yes. um, KT are going to take the Drake and then look for a flash play onto Ona. That is a miss, though, unfortunately, there is now Perfect looks for the pickoff, and Senna is just dead. Seismic Shove used defensively. That is decent peel, but now the culling comes in. The Redemption layered on top. The Teleport flank angle, and there is the Encore. Zay is going to be taken out. Death is answered, though. Carrier going down very low, and KT, they still have their AD carry because it's BDD. Yeah, you know what? It's kind of like accidental funnel illusion, okay? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all the gold. Oh, my goodness. And then he's it got finally worked. He's got double shields. <laughs> having a good time. No, we actually, we were watching Owner with the vision goggles, so I don't know entirely how T1 gave up their control the bottom side of the map here, but they completely did, and then Nochik was able to set up brushes here, then Owner looks for a desperate steal. They really built like this, it was just a secondary support, but in this game you get the shield value, and the AP ratio on that is pretty good, and you have the uh, Ivern as well, so it's just kind of crazy what this Lucian is, is able looking for another Zenith Blade, doesn't find it this time. He is uh, certainly on I'm going in mode, and that has certainly not changed throughout the entirety of this series. Now, able to get on in here, that Seismic Shove not really going to find too much there as Fake is just going to have to back off to the next Prince line. I'm pretty sure from uh, the W from Surround Sound from yes. Seraphine, he also then gets the extra shield, the reapplication of the Trigger Seed shield, and, and then, like, it's just kind of ridiculous. Wait, T1, but T1 yeah, looking for this one. Death realizing that that wall is in a rough position. Let's see whether they can keep themselves alive. Is perfect. Um, you are just dead, my friend. Uh, the rest of your team were not there. That was a disaster. Yeah. KT, they pushed mid all the way to the inhibitor, but didn't get the inhibitor. So that doesn't mean you necessarily just for free get the back. I think they definitely should have split their backs and tried to send some members who didn't need to purchase items actually over there to contest some prio. Because like I said, if T1 get there first, they can win a fight. And Faker just said, no, you're not allowed to come over here. And having the choke point control, get set up brushes, and then just go chase the Sejuani. Just, just put up the brushes. Cool. Use your setup. Oh, no. Now just uh, going to be chased out by Beryl. 
There's a Weaver's Wall as Beryl's getting amongst it, going to stun him up here as the high note is so good. Solar Flare going to connect onto Owner as well. Remember, he does have a GA, so he can keep himself alive for a lot longer. What if you were a champion with CC, shields, a little bit of healing, and also a bunch of damage? Yeah. Would you be Seraphine? I think you would be in this game. Huh. Yeah, yeah. It's actually crazy. All right, now they're going to start the Baron. T1 all around them. Yeah, there is a Seismic Shove, going to connect onto Perfect. Down to 50%, the Shock Blast is not going to land as owner. Can he be the hero? He gets it, he steals it! And he is going to go down to the GA. Can they get themselves out alive though? That's the question. Even Ona is able to survive, but Gumiushi's dead. The Jace is dead as well. There is not a lot of damage left in this composition. And the kick out onto Pyoshik there. Death is probably going to have the damage if he can actually land a few of these buttons. The Smite comes in and there it goes. Surround sound means that he's just never going to be able to uh, touch the Seraphine. And even though the Baron was picked up here by T1, it's likely that KT can still do some big damage to this base. I mean, Zayus, he did kill a lot of shields in that fight, but otherwise not able to do a whole lot. Faker alone to defend is going to be so difficult. Guma not really an AD carry here. They have Baron buff minions. Oh, another solar player that really nailed the minion as Faker's going to go golden. Seismic Shove connected in the meantime. That looked pretty good, but Faker is still dead. And uh, Daisy, she's just wandering around. Carrier going the wrong direction, throws an ulti to Narnia, and he will be taken down. It's BDD collecting his eighth of the game as Gumiyushi slinks into the mist, but he might want to stay there as this game is over. KT roaring back into the series. These it would not be a Telecom War without matchup. three games. Click that subscribe button faster than Ramus can say, okay. See you on the next one.